uh, configurations, the bus bar can actually power quite a lot more, uh, uh, yeah, quite a lot more uh, IT. And so we want to want to figure out what's the limit of this of, of this deployment. We um, also look at different percentages of how much of the servers are air cooled or how much of the components on the servers are air cooled versus how much is in direct liquid cooling. Um, the potential gas will be, you know, above the existing specifications from, we believe, somewhere between uh, 400 and 800 kilowatt total. Um, and we will use Meta's uh, CFD team to simulate how much of a limit we will achieve there. Um, with the efforts of the advanced cooling group, we will look at different uh, PoE locations and, and make calculations how efficient we can run this. Um, and we assumed, like, we try to go with high uh, ambient air temperatures uh, inside and outside to, um, you know, have a high utilization on the heat reuse side or to have dry, efficient dry cooling. Um, if we find that we have, do, do not, are uh, limited by 70 kilowatt, we potentially will look maybe even to have a higher use case. Uh, on this show, I heard that people have used up to five power shells on one rack, which would equal up to uh, 128 kilowatts. I don't know what the, those guys are doing, but apparently it's been done. <laughs> or, or if as the panel here, is there anything that we should else consider, you know, if we have the bigger group? So the percentage is the actual percentage of total power that will be in the air. So this yeah. is 60 to times RAM. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Jerome mentioned, so the, the percentages of air cooled is, uh, is, is including the components on the server that are not liquid cooled, uh, but where the air is heated up and then cooled down by the end of the uh, reader heat exchanger. So, this is um, how the actual technologies are, uh, are now presented and, 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 and you know, you, you can find them all over the, the show here. The power shelf is, is smaller in, in the sense that the, the, the version 2 had this bigger uh, three OU slots for power shelf and BBU. The power shelf itself now is only one OU. The IT gear can support up, uh, up to a lot of GPUs. Um, and I heard that Meta is looking at a lot of it's looking at a lot of AI use cases, so potentially more and more of those boxes in the middle, with uh, a lot of GPU usage, will be will be de uh, will be deployed. Those come with uh, automated uh, mind uh, what is it uh, valve uh, mating blind mate valves. So I, I would just say automatic connection. You push it in, <laughs> and you instantly have the liquid cooling, um, and you see the, the manifolds shown here as we have a nice example out of, the, of one of those automatic manifolds already. So this is uh, already existing. This is not super theoretically. We're just trying to see with these technologies that are deployed, are existing, how much we can push a modular data center. So those are the... Uh, the, the, the variance we are we're looking in terms of uh, temperatures that will be you know uh, 32 degrees on the on the cold aisle the idea gear heats up the air up to 47 degrees and then it's again cooled down to 32 degrees and that warm water is then going into the uh, direct on chip and with in the initial um, setup we have a relatively low temperature of 44 degrees going out to the dry cooler uh, in, the, in the lowest expectation. And we actually want to see how high we can push that and how much usable power we get out of this. Um, any question regarding that, that setup or any suggestions? question uh, related to the efficiency of, of the cooling system. Mm -hmm. um, knowing that we have the chance in this case to, to get uh, 
liquid cooling system, so a, a huge delta T and a high temperature. Uh, did you investigate different type of technology? Because you said that you use adiabatic system, so in which, how, how did you find like that's for the best uh, way, knowing that, as you said, water is probably uh, going to be a, a kind of uh, shortfall resource now? So, so you mean the, um you mean the uh, cooling technology outside of the data center? Yeah. Or? Yeah. yeah, so we have different uh, people who work, who work with us in the modular data center group, and we'll, we'll try to highlight different approaches of, of them. And we are not, you know, we, we, are, we open to contributions, and we just found something that is relatively, one company was relatively interesting in how they do adiabatic cooling. Um, and, but we, we open to, to discussions for, for, to, for including other ones as well. Yeah. Because it's chilled water system. It's not chilled water system. Uh, it's not chilled water. Hmm? It's not chilled water. It's not chilled water. Okay. So that's perhaps a way to benchmark and to see what is the best. Right, that could be also one, one yeah, that could be a whole another parameter of, of looking at this, yeah. So. We have uh, made some airflow considerations because obviously the air that goes into the rack through the heat exchanger has to go uh, also in front of the back. Um, me, the uh, ingenious, uh, not so data center person, obviously was, uh, was suggesting right away that we crisscross the racks so that we have cold in front aisle, letting the servers do all the work. And uh, actually, that will <laughs> we will test that out because then the four slots who are now openings to move air through them, we can close them with, with servers and we could potentially hit like one megawatt per modular data center, which would be quite substantial. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we will do heavily uh, CFD analysis of the airflow in there and not and, and try not to create a storm in a water glass, but rather have you know efficient uh, airflow in that. And so that is, that, is, that, is, uh, that, that we, we believe will be the limits of the rear door heat concept in, in, in such a small space, the way how you, you know, still a non-tubular, you can move the air through that, through the data center. Um, the use cases uh, we see for this, for people who want, you know, off the shelves, OCP technology, we see industry HPC being interested in going in higher densities. Telco and Edge, I hear, have issues with you know, running OCP in tight spaces, so they are looking at liquid cooling technologies. Research HPC obviously is another uh, way to to create with minimal effort, high density. They don't want to spend anything in terms of you know. If if we jump back, you see um, because of this setup with the rear door heat exchanger, we don't have any air handling other air handling unit. And uh, research HPC people always never want to spend any money on the facility, and so. Potentially, that is, is a use case for them. Um, hybrid cloud solutions, you know, the meta, uh, the meta uh, uh, verse needs compute um, and real-time computing issues that are, just need very low latency. We see that those are the uh, issue or those are the use cases that, that potentially can arise. The call to action: we we want to start out with a white paper to do this. Um, and potentially um, move it into a specification. Uh, start now with this uh, with this presentation. The preparation has actually been 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 started uh, two weeks prior. Uh, create a draft. You know, get the feedback from the community, get it to final, and be able to publish it uh, ideally and present in half a year in San Francisco. San Jose, sorry. And yeah, feel free to join the uh, Reader Heat Exchanger group or the OCP MDC group to get an update, to uh, put in your, uh, your, your thoughts. Uh, we, we meet regularly, you find us on the, on the group's uh, channel. I'm happy to see you all <laughs> in, that, uh, in, in the calls or later this afternoon. Thanks so much. So, and with this, I lead over to me. <laughs> <laughs>
No, but I, I have, I have, no, I have, I have, I have luckily support from from David, uh, so I don't have. You don't have to see only me all the time, and let's be all. Yeah. 